when I learned how to do beadwork, one thing that some of my teachers always taught was don't bead if you don't feel good because those feelings will go into your work or you're gonna like mess up or you're gonna be frustrated. So there'd be times I really wanna bead but I'm not feeling the feeling yet. So I'll, I'll just separate my beads, group and sort them. <laughs> and I'm just like sitting there doing that and then it just like my feelings feel better. And then I'm like, okay, I'm gonna start on my project. My first exposure to art was seeing my grandma making star quilts. Both of my grandmas made star quilts. My mom's mom. I was always kind of sickly as a kid, so I had to like stay home with her. She'd give me this big box of like scraps and she showed me how to sew and I'd make these little Barbie blankets and stuff. <laughs> and so I was like five, six years old and I just had like all this valuable time with my, my Koshi, my grandmother. And she just taught me a whole lot, just about sitting quietly. And then my mom, she would make clothing, Pendleton coats. Like I remember going to sleep at night and she would have this Pendleton blanket and I'd wake up in the morning and there'd be like a, a Pendleton coat hanging up, you know, that she made all night. So, I mean, I guess I grew up around that just creativity, you know, just seeing people make things. And so when I started beading, I had seen my mom make barrettes and stuff, but she wasn't like the bead worker, you know, she was always sewing. She was a really good seamstress. I just got this book and it said like Native American beadwork. And I just read how to bead and I grabbed a barrette that I liked and I just copied it. And then from there, I just kept making things and making things and talking to people like, oh, how do you make this? And, or they would tell me how they made something. Like with Super, it can, he made moccasins and he's like, I can show you. And I was like, sure, you know, and just spending the time to like learn. These older ones want to pass on that knowledge, just being there to collect it and learn and ask questions. You know, I think that's really important. <laughs> powwow outfits or making our outfits for the powwow. That was like why I started beading. Watching my mom make our dresses and making outfits for my brothers. Just watching her make things, I like kind of learned. The first dress I made, I was like, I made this. And she's like, who, who showed you how? And I'm like, I just watched you like all this time and I learned. I don't feel like she realized like she was teaching me how to make it. You know, she would just tell me all her little tips and tricks and stuff. And then when I had my daughter, you know, you just want your kid to look the cutest. So I'd make her all her little outfits and she's my little doll. <laughs> I'd just make all her little stuff. And I also want to be confident and know that she looks good and cared for and loved by making all this stuff for her. And so every year she grows and sometimes it's so disappointing because she just grows so fast. <laughs> and it's like, I just made that. <laughs> and you like already grew out of it. So this is like her old stuff. We made this together. Um, so this goes with, let's see. These are her old moccasins. I wish I could just find like all her little sizes of the same moccasin. <laughs> so she's kind of outgrown this set. Just making new stuff for her has kind of been like the past 10 years of what I've been doing mainly, because she's my muse. <laughs> right now I'm just making this cape for my daughter for her fancy dance outfit. Super made her a pair of moccasins, so I just kind of used his moccasin design and colors as the inspiration. So she has a whole set that matches. Whatever she wants, we go to the fabric store, what do you like? We talk about things and, you know, make, make things her favorite colors. When I see her dance in, in something that I made or that me and my mom made together or all three of us made together, because she works on her own outfits now too. She sews on fringe and she, she does stuff. She helps us too now that she's older. But just seeing her out there dancing and just all this love, you know, it's just like really a good feeling. All those hours of love. <laughs> this could take, you know, an hour and a half to do this line. So it's a couple hours here, a couple hours there. You know, I start in the middle and I work my way out and then filling in the background. So I actually did this on the way to Montana, like this whole upper half. <laughs> so I don't know, if I just get uninterrupted time, I could work really fast because I've been beating for so long. It doesn't take me a long time anymore. And plus I don't have to figure things out because I already made it in my mind. And now I just like, you know, plan it out on paper. Now this is going to be the second half. The front half, 
of that and then uh, so I'll kind of use the same design and we were talking about like what to put up here so me and my daughter are still talking about this design here so we'll see Last one standing. Yes. Yeah. Are you making new beadwork too? I'm gonna make some new earrings. Every Friday night, I have this beading in Gayapi. So Gayapi in our language means it literally means they say. So it'd be like gossip, but it's I just say it just to be funny because it's like who what, who doesn't want to know the gossip? <laughs> you know? But it's kind of to get people to come over. Red conditioner, and then I use beeswax on mm -hmm. top of it. But oh. this, this one, I just use this one. I wanted to set a couple of hours a week to work on beadwork. And I was like, I get so distracted or I'll be like, oh, it's fine. I'll, I, I'll work on it later and I'll never get to it. You know, so like weeks pass and I'll never touch my beadwork. But I'm like, if I set aside, you know, a few hours on a Friday night and then also like go on Facebook and invite everybody, then people will come over. And so it works, kind of like an open house because people come over for an hour, somebody else will show up and somebody else, you know, so it's like all night people are just coming and going. And it's also cool because there'll be something I don't know and then somebody will come and then they'll show somebody else how to do something. And then sometimes we just sit around and eat and talk and bead. <laughs> so it's like, it's not always teaching. So it's sometimes you have to do really good gossip, no? <laughs> I get all the tea. <laughs> So I really used my knowledge of beadwork to teach language. It's the thing I'm most passionate about right now. I want somebody to make something and learn the words of like how to say leather, how to say beads, how to say all these things they're using. And then also like the technique, but they're also like, hey, can you pass me the scissors? Or I have some string. And it's, sometimes it's awkward to speak the language because you're so vulnerable and you're like scared of making mistakes. But if you're like making something or doing something and talking, like you don't feel everybody looking at you because everybody else is doing stuff. Right now, a lot of things that I make, I don't charge for them because I don't need the money, you know, because I work. So I'm like, I, I would rather get something from them that they made. So it's kind of like this exchange. And you never know, one time I got a jar of like antique beads and stuff, it was really cool. You never know what you're gonna get if you say you wanna make a tree. I think about Dakota women, you know, we're always raised to be industrious. This is a, our Dakota way, is, that's still important, a part of like our way of life because Especially nowadays, so many people are like on their screens and on their phones and we have to keep our young people doing these things and adapting. You know, we're a living culture, so we're gonna change. Like, this is just how it is. So it's the Mandalorian. This is like my third Mandalorian skirt. <laughs> this is just the latest. <laughs> so it has like the little gold thread this is a little details I like. So I think this is like the reason why I make things is because I make things I, I want to wear. <laughs> you know? That should be chumpy. This is the way. <laughs> yeah. Lakotas are Mandalorians. <laughs> you can record me saying that. <laughs> Get me on camera saying that. <laughs> Language changes. We change, you know, everything's changing, but like I, I try to preserve the old ways as much as possible. So learning those old ways of like brain tanning, learning the old ways of our old designs, the kind of beads that they used in the 1800s. In the past years, just realizing my Dakota lineage is Bidewakantua, I just really start loving like the more floral and the woodland designs. Learning my own history of my lineage changed my art. That's just like my wall of my favorite people. <laughs> so um, I have my great 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 grandfather, Ta Oyate Duta, or Little Crow. Growing up, I just didn't really like grasp who he was until I was probably a teenager, like his importance in Dakota history. To me, it was like just somebody in our family. 
And then I like went to school and I started learning about Minnesota history and I was like, wow, he's significant in Minnesota history, you know. A lot of times people just judge you on the way you look automatically or they have a stereotype of what Native should look like. You know, oh, you speak the language, you should look like this. <laughs> oh, you do beadwork, you should look like this, you know, and I don't. I think growing up amongst a lot of darker natives and be called white girl and stuff like that, it just, it just really was a, a source of insecurity for me. Knowing my history and knowing where I come from, knowing my ancestors, helped me overcome that and really just know who I am. I'm not trying to look the part anymore. There was a part of my life where I felt like I had to have like long, dark braids and stuff, you know? And now I'm like, I'm just gonna look like me. I'm just gonna look how I think I wanna look. A long time ago, Dakota women would gather and make things or be industrious, especially in the winter time. That's like when we would make all of our things. And then at some point in history, we just got to making beadwork or trinkets for like people was a way to make money. This was something we did for survival. Now I, I feel like my thought of beadwork is kind of like, I want to make something beautiful for my friends. I want to make something beautiful for my daughter. As somebody who creates things, I like to look at what I made, like, oh wow, I made that. Wow, it looks really good on her. That brings me more joy than like any dollar amount could do, you know? <laughs>